Hi guys, today's fish spotlight video is on the sparkling Grammy or the Trichopsis pumilla. Uh, big shout out by the way to Samantha R who asked for seeing a video on this species. Samantha, your patience has been rewarded. Now these fish originate from Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand. Their typical uh, you know, typical habitat is characterized by slow moving water type environments. Uh, flooded forests, flood plains, uh, swamp type areas, small river uh, tributaries, roadside ditches, rice paddy fields, that kind of thing, you get the picture. Now, um, you know, that type of habitat is usually very densely loaded with uh, either submerged aquatic plants or uh, emergent surrounding plant growth. Uh, and for that reason, these fish are obviously shyer. They're a dwarf species. It's a shy, retiring kind of somewhat reclusive kind of fish uh, so you want to make sure that the lighting conditions are not too bright for a species like this they won't be comfortable in that type of environment now a um, little bit about the behavior tank size setup and the conditions they like now they do best really with other nano species you want to avoid any fast uh, moving boisterous you know aggressive feeding species you want to not a good tank made for uh, sparkling grammys they're a dwarf species so their average length is somewhere between an inch and an inch and a half in length their preferred temperature range is anywhere from about 75 to 82 degrees fahrenheit or 24 to 28 degrees c i would recommend something more like 79 to 81 82 degrees fahrenheit keep it a little bit warmer these fish like soft or acidic water, uh, pH range they tolerate is pretty wide, 5.5 to 7.5. Again, when it comes to pH, better off on the acidic side, somewhere between 6.2 to 6.8 is, is really a better range. In terms of water hardness, you know, the range is pretty wide too. They're quite tolerant, 1 to 10 dKH, that's quite a spread. We would prefer something between about 3 and 6 dKH as an ideal a hardness condition. Now when you're keeping them uh, you have choices obviously it can be a spe species specific type tank densely planted with a group of them that's really the probably the best way to enjoy them uh, and within that you're gonna for sure see a pair so there might come a time where you want to remove a couple of them and uh, they'll do very very well that way. The substrate should be a sand some leaf litter, sea almond tree leaves, great thing to, to add to most anabantoids tanks, anabantoids tanks, and especially in case of the sparkling granny, that's typically the case. That will help uh, them to demonstrate better coloration and impart some of the tannin tannins that are natural, make them feel more comfortable in a slightly stained water. Now, another characteristic about these fish is that they're really adept at jumping. So if you have your water level up fairly high, you wanna make sure that your uh, canopy is tight fitting and even the smallest space needs to be protected against potentially their jumping out. And uh, of course, to keep them calmer, dimmer lighting conditions, amber stained water as we've recommended. Now, when it comes to feeding, these are, are uh, you know, small mouthed dwarf anabantoids. So a small granular food like we have over here, our beta bug, uh, bug bites, the beta formulation, great food for them. Uh, ideal for small anabantoids like that. Uh, tropical uh, formulation of bug bites is really good too. And of course, let's not forget the key water conditioners. Uh, always key to keeping a clean, healthy tank. We've got our water conditioner here from Fluval along with some of our biological uh, supportive products as well that are always key. Now when it comes to feeding, yeah, the granular food is a great idea, but some variety is always well recommended as well. Uh, chopped up frozen bloodworms, um, daphnia, brine shrimp, these are all good things. And if you really want to give them a good treat, every once in a while, some a couple feedings of live baby brine shrimp will really help to condition them well. Now, in summary, this is a fantastic small species to keep. Great tank made for such species as dwarf rasboras, pencil fish, small tetras, dwarf corridoras. <coughs> and you can keep them in an aquarium easily of about 10 to 15 gallons, no problem at all. Again, as we said, you can keep them as a small group. The species-specific tank is kind of my preference for doing it for them. And you'll see more social antics between the, the, uh, the fish themselves. Now, some floating plant cover, not a bad idea. Something like frog bit, you can go with a kind of a look where you have branchy driftwood, leaf litter, and some frog bit at the top. They are a bubble nest builder, so they do like that kind of setup. And um, 
you know, spawning is something that's likely to actually happen in that kind of setup. Males are differentiated by their longer dorsal fins and caudal fins, brighter body coloration, and a great thing about these fish is that they don't predate their own fry, so you're bound to more or less see some, uh, some young fish growing if you have a breeding pair in a tank like that. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked what you saw. If you got any comments or suggestions about other species you want to see us do a video on, please leave that below in the commentary. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching.